The impact of health reform on wholesalers. Technology's influence on the growth of retail pharmacies and physician practices. The changing and expanding role of pharmaceutical distributors. What does Amerisource Bergen's president and CEO think of these key trends? And how might the industry's responses to these trends change how healthcare is delivered? Join us to find out. In the Know starts now. Hello and welcome to In The Know, your source for insight and analysis on the issues that matter to our dynamic healthcare market. I'm your host, Gina Clark. Today we get a CEO's perspective on how key industry drivers like health reform and the implementation of electronic medical records might affect all areas of healthcare, from product development to sites of care. We'll explore what pharmacies, physicians, and manufacturers could learn from one another to improve operations and we will hear thoughts on what lies ahead for pharmaceutical distributors. Here to offer his insight on these and other subjects is Steve Collis, President and CEO of Amerisource Bergen. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. Pleasure to be here, Gina. So let's start with some positives. Steve, are there reasons for optimism in the healthcare industry, and, and where are those? You know, I think the average consumer out there assumes that the pharmaceutical industry is, is you know, 30, 40 percent of the healthcare spend, but the reality is it's 14 or 15 percent, and most drugs are really getting cheaper. You know, we're going to get into an environment here pretty soon where 80 percent of the units prescribed are generics, and you know, many generics are you know a couple of dollars a month. So, you know, we're really in an environment where pharmaceuticals are having an enormous impact on on healthcare, and and we forget you know all the benefits that that pharmaceuticals have brought to healthcare, particularly in the United States. And uh, I think sometimes people forget and take for granted all, all the tremendous advances we've had, you know, whether it be in oncology or antibiotics or anti-infectives or just think about HIV. That's probably the most notable example of, of, of how things have changed. You know, 15, 20 years ago, people were thinking this was going to affect mortuary tables. They were talking about the life insurance industry having a tsunami of HIV patients who were, you know, affecting mortality rates and that, and it's, it's completely changed. I mean, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical industry is just a great place to be. Uh, Amerisource Bergen's proud to be in it, and, and uh, there are causes for optimism. You know, I think, um, you know, the, the uninsured, you know, you know, as an American, I am an American. I mean, people sometimes don't think I am, but I'm very proud to be an American. And, you know, people sometimes forget that we've got, you know, a healthcare crisis where, you know, 30, 30 to 50 million is the estimate, but probably around 40 million people don't have access to pharmaceuticals and they're going to be getting access in the next couple of years. So that's another cause for optimism. You know, the final cause I mention is, we, we meet all the time with pharmaceutical manufacturers and, uh, you know, so many companies, you know, whether it's, it's, it's Pfizer, Merck, Glaxo, uh, the biotech companies, they're investing so many billions of dollars. They continue their commitment to research and development. So I've got great faith that they're going to come up with the right molecules that are going to get through FDA approval, that are going to be of tremendous value to patients and of tremendous value to the health system. And I think we're here to help them. I think we're here to help them you know, get those prescriptions filled, get those prescriptions covered by insurance companies, and get those prescriptions out to the patients and the providers that, that, that utilize them so efficiently. What challenges or obstacles still loom for companies like Amerisource Bergen and your customers? Well, you know, I think the one thing that, that, that we're very mindful of is, is customer consolidation. Uh, I think, uh, you know, our customers are right now in two very visible uh, big consolidations, and, uh, you know, we're obviously very mindful of that. Uh, the particular economic circumstances we find ourselves in is that literally any company that could be for sale or is contemplated being for sale, you know, is up for sale, and that's a function of large companies like ourselves having lots of cash. You know, a little bit of economic uncertainty is driving that. Changes in tax policy, 
Uh, and also just the general feeling that the big are getting bigger and, and stronger. And certainly we are part of that. You know, we're sitting with uh, close to $2 billion in cash in our, in our last couple of quarters. And, uh, you know, we, we definitely have been part of that consolidation trend. So that, I think, is, 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 is part of what's driving this. Um, you know, the other part is that drugs have been harder to get approved. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that that changes. I think that that, again, is part of the, the legislative problem. But the, the biggest concern we have is, is the austerity program programs that are going on in Washington and um, you know the fact that that healthcare dollars are going to be more scrutinized than ever before uh, the healthcare dollars going to have to be worked harder you're seeing that and I think that that's also driving a lot of the consolidation and uh, you know and we have to really think about how do our important customer segments be it independent pharmacy or be it you know, community hospitals or, or, or community oncologists or community physicians that we service, say, through Bessie Medical or ASD, how do, how do they survive in, in this environment where they're going to have to give, you know, real-time electronic information uh, and, you know, where they're going to have to really deal with compressed reimbursement margins, uh, where patients are going to have more limited networks? The, the, this is, I think, going to be the, 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 the titanic opportunity and struggle for Amerisource Bergen is how do we help these customer constituents that are our best profit and our best, uh, you know, really moving the needle opportunity, moving the dial opportunity, I should say, uh, how do we help them survive and prosper in a, in a much more challenging healthcare environment from a, from a dollar perspective, from a budget perspective? It's obvious you've given a lot of thought to, to really how to help your company move forward and help your customers move forward in this environment. And, you know, part of what is difficult in this environment is the health care reform and the regulatory environment that we're living in. Are there significant unanswered questions that Amerisource Bergen and its customers will be working through specifically as it relates to regulatory and health reform? You know, there's, there's many, many areas that are certainly uncertain right now. Uh, one of them is tax policy and, uh, you know, uh, what, what is going to happen with the, the LIFO method of accounting uh, specifically for tax purposes, which Amerisource Bergen has deployed for over 20 years. We're in very good company. Nearly 40% of companies use that. That's one good example. Another good example of, 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 of how legislation is impacting us is pedigree, which is, you know, very impactful to, to every single order that we fulfill every day. And, and we, we fill over 20,000 every day. You know, we're shipping, you know, multiple, multiple uh, sites, uh, you know, out of each distribution center every day. And that's going to be impacted by by pedigree legislation. So if you think about it, the best opportunity for us would be with our, our you know, over 30 distribution centers, if you include specialty and, uh, and some of the, 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 the smaller distribution centers we have, the best opportunity we have is to have a federal legislation and those are the sort of things we're working on. Um, you know, but th there's just many, many areas, you know, the, the FDA backlog, uh, the injectable shortages that we're seeing in the hospitals that are really being impacted. You know, part of this is, I think, out of, you know, poor, you know, very poor reimbursement practices. And, and you're seeing more and more understanding of this. this. This is really impacting patient care, impacting our ability to service our customers in the way that we want to, not really having the products accessible. This is a unique problem that has occurred here in the last year or so that uh, is really driving uh, potentially a lot of unwanted le le legislative scrutiny, potentially. So th these are the sort of things that we, that we really have to be very mindful of. Again, you know, as I said earlier, you know, opportunities are going to be the, the uninsured being covered. Uh, th there's also many, many unknowns, like what is the accountable care organization and the health system is going to come out to be? What is e-prescribing? You know, how some of this healthcare technology initiatives that the administration has been encouraging, how's that going to impact our customers? How will independents play in that? How will larger customers play in that? How will Amerisource Bergen play in that? So, you know, lots of opportunities, but that's really why we have the, the opportunity that we have in front of us, which is really our strong balance sheet, our, our, our efficient practices, and our people that are you know, so vested in, in the job that we do every day and are so committed to excellence and are so customer focused that I think we're going to figure this out. And I think, if anything, Amerisource Bergen's role in healthcare, and I say that specifically in healthcare, is only going to be enhanced in the years ahead. 
You know, Steve, that, that is a great way to look at it. And, and if we're looking for some of the good to come out of health care reform, one of the things is maybe the increased adoption of EMRs, e-prescribing, and other technologies within the physician practices and health systems and pharmacies. You referenced that a little bit. Maybe some additional thoughts on how technology will continue to influence, you know, your customers' choices and their operations and how they do business. Well, a couple of thoughts for you. You know, um, you know I, was, I, was, I was on a plane yesterday and uh, I was reading a study that really talked about over one in five prescriptions are now not being fulfilled. And, and, and part of that might be, you know, reimbursement reasons and that, you know, there's, there's a tremendous problem with unemployment right now in the country. But, you know, I'm tremendously proud of the role that we play in getting drugs covered. So, you know, that, that, that's absolutely one thing. The other thing that I think is really becoming a true differentiator for Amerisource Bergen, and the more I meet with customers, I think that this is a very powerful notion, the notion of our flexibility. The fact that we don't sell an EMR system, I think is becoming a true differentiator for us in a positive light because we can say it doesn't matter which EMR you use, you know, which pharmacy system you use, Amerisource Bergen is going to link into you. So we're going to be the easiest customer to do business with because we don't have constraints on your operating environment, but we want to hook into your operating environment and be the easiest company to do business with. And I think this is a really powerful notion. Um, you know, I was with a large pharma company earlier in this week, and, and they, they really resonated with that because what we know is that each hospital d thinks of their business differently, they think of their future differently, so they want the flexibility. And then you get down to the more granular level, the smaller customers, they absolutely want the opportunity to move at their own pace when it comes to adopting technology. So us retaining this flexibility, us, us not having a fixed concept of what your technology should be, you know, there's this idea of BYOT, bring your own technology. Well, I think it's very powerful to say to our customers, you bring your own technology, and almost any technology you have, you know, we'll be able to link into it, and you'll be able to access our systems, our ordering platforms, our intelligence, our warehouse-type systems, and, and I think that that's, that's very, very powerful. So, you know, th th those are part of the trends that I see. Lastly, I think that... Um, you know, we have an opportunity with e-prescribing. I, I think it's it's going to be exciting. We've all, you know, not heard those jokes how doctors' handwritings are really bad. Uh, so, you know, the accuracy that you get from e-prescribing, linking that into our central, uh, you know, processing abilities and, and maybe utilizing, you know, physician networks or, or pharmacy networks and really being the person, you know, the, the entity that brings that together for the smaller customer is, I think, going to be a very powerful opportunity for Amerisource Bergen.